Hey everyone, welcome to the Vienna White Roundtable Season 1, Episode 30. I'm your host, Millie Rouge, from the band Vienna White here in Edmonton, Canada. This roundtable is a YAG Music production. So thank you all for tuning into the show today. I'd like to introduce to you our very first guest, Savannah. Can you introduce yourself? What's up, y'all? My name is Savannah Brister, and I am from Memphis, Tennessee, and I tend to be in the Neo Soul range. My music. Yeah. Fantastic. How about yourself, Mauve? Hey everyone, my name is Mauve. I'm a singer-songwriter from Toronto, Canada, and I like working with the electro-pop genres. So thank you for having me. Alrighty. So I want to quickly, before we actually talk about our topic of the day, I want to talk about your guys' individual careers and how you kind of came to where you are today so our audience can know a little bit more about you. Um, so Mauve, can you start off just in about two to three minutes or less telling us a little bit about your musical journey of when you started to where you're at now and a little bit more about it. For sure. So growing up, I was always inspired by musicals, watching them, and that kind of pushed me to wanting to write my own music and to perform on stage. So after high school, I got my own computer software and started you know, doing what I could to produce the songs that I've written and then posting those online. So I've been able to meet a lot of great people that way on the Toronto music scene, different collaborators, different producers to help me further my journey. Um, and in October 2019, I released my first EP called Palette. So I'm very happy uh, with all the support that it, it's been getting on Spotify and all that. So yeah, awesome. it's, been, uh, it's been really fun. So are you located in Toronto as of right now? Like, is that where you're living currently? Yeah, that's okay. where I've been from the whole time, the Toronto Beautiful. area, so. Very nice. All right. And Savannah, can you introduce your musical career and kind of how you started to where you're at now? I know you've got some amazing accomplishments you've accomplished already so far. Can you tell us a little, <laughs> a little bit about that? <laughs> uh, yes, ma'am. Um, well, I have been writing since I was about 13-ish. Um, those are songs that I want to keep buried. Um, <laughs> but I, um, over time, I play the piano. And um, got the audio on the voice last year. And hashtag wow. legend. Um, <laughs> but yeah, throughout my career, all I've done, I've been homeschooled, um, graduated high school last year. And um, truly, this is, this is it. This is all I do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I saw, I saw on your Instagram, the, the voice stuff and I got, I was really excited because I was like, I did not know. Like I, at first I was just yeah. casually scrolling and I was like, oh, okay. Okay. That's really cool. <laughs> so congratulations. That must've been an incredible so experience. Much. Yeah. The first thing were you, cool. were you working with? Like I was working judges. with, uh, John Legend and, um, he had, Khalid on and y'all just imagine this girl was a gawky teenager. I still am. Um, a gawky <laughs> teenager. And they're like throwing these famous people in front of my faces and I'm like, yeah. what's going on? I'd be hard to handle. I don't know how I'd act like cool about that. I'd be like, I, no. I cannot act cool. <laughs> I definitely geeked out. <laughs> so where do these aud auditions take place when you audition for it? Well, I actually, I tried out when I was 15 and didn't make it through, but I'm a very persistent person. Yeah. <laughs> and I tried again in Atlanta um, when I was 17 years old. And um, just from then on, like we kept getting callbacks and mm -hmm. um, it was just kind of, it kept going. I was like, when's this going to end? <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good experience. Yeah, really, really cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you both for sharing about your musical career. It sounds like you guys have had some really great successes so far. Um, so we're going to dive into our topic of the day, which I think really resonates with these ladies and they seem to really put forward a lot of their themselves into their music. Um, so our topic is what it's like to put yourself 100% into music. Now, I know for myself, I'm a musician in Edmonton, Alberta. I'm in a pop band with my bandmate, Marissa Kay. So if you guys are scheduled for any live streams, um, she'll be the lady that you're doing the stream with. Um, but we ourselves, we both went to like a college here in Edmonton for music and we really decided to devote our lives to doing music, even though it's, as most of you know, it's not typically a very uh, financial <laughs> successful career for the most part, <laughs> depending on how uh, you're kind of, you get successful with it. Um, so I think this is a huge topic because a lot of people, when they hear 
um, anyone say, oh yeah, I'm like, I'm trying to be a musician or I'm, I'm really taking my next step. You get a lot of, I don't want to say negative feedback, but a lot of hesitation and a lot of questions. So I kind of want to chat more about this and get some more honest feedback about this. Um, so my first question for you both is what has your experience been like taking music so seriously compared to it just being a fun hobby? Um, so Savannah, do you want to tell us more about kind of when you decided to take this more seriously and obviously audition for a huge TV show? That's a pretty yeah. big deal. So kind of how did you get there in your life? Um, well, I will say music has been the only thing that I'm remotely good at. <laughs> so mm -hmm. like we knew sports wasn't it, like none of that worked really for me. And, um, I always, I remember looking at my mom probably when I was about, I was in middle school. So mm -hmm. sometime 12, 13, and I was just positive. I just had some vocal lessons of my first thing, like in getting some real training. And yeah. I, uh, I remember just looking at my mom and I was like, I don't know when this is going to happen. I don't know how this is going to happen, but I was like, this is going to happen. <laughs> and so I think after that, and they just saw that I put the work in and, um, I do think having done the voice that gave me some street cred that really proved to my family, my friends, mm -hmm. she's serious. She's going to do this. And yeah. so I think just the work ethic, I think that really proves, um, to be that you're really serious about something in my opinion yeah. I just think that really proves yourself so yeah absolutely yeah. how about yourself Mo mm -hmm. what was kind of your experience like when you decided to take this like as your next step in your actual like life career yeah well for me it was just almost something I've always loved doing in my life like I can't imagine just needing to take a break from music mm -hmm. like if if it's something that people are working at and then you get tired of it you just put it down move on to something else like for me it's always something that I have to go to so and also when I'm ever trying to do something I always want to give it like 110 percent no matter what it is so if it's music I'm like okay we're focusing on this we're getting it let's go yeah. so I think it also comes down to like the time you put towards it a lot of people like might want to make excuses saying they don't have enough time but it's like yeah. It's all about prioritizing it and making sure you're putting in those hours to like progress in your craft. So for me, like even if it's something tedious that I find with music, I'm like, just got to go with it because every little thing will like inch you closer and help you get better. Yeah. So that's what it's been like for me. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's a really tough thing to decide to want to do really seriously. But I think when you know in your soul, and I think a lot of musicians feel this way that like, I can't imagine myself doing other things than music. Like, yes, there are certain mm -hmm. things I will do to make money and not, you know, be like, I'm <laughs> starving. But <laughs> I think at the end of the day, we all know what we're really passionate about. And mm -hmm. it's really hard to imagine. Like I always told my parents, I was like, I can never see myself doing anything else, which I know sounds crazy, but like, I can't imagine being a doctor. I can't imagine being a dental hygienist. Like mm -hmm. I can't, you know, so it's, it's really tough to kind of get past that barrier. But I think it makes us stronger as artists and musicians for sure. When we, when we finally decide. Um, so I'm curious to know, what has been the hardest part to overcome about being fully committed to music? So what was kind of that step that was really hard or what hurdles did you kind of have to jump over to really kind of get people on board with your mission and what you're doing and being a full, full 100% musician. Um, so Mo, do you maybe have any experiences where you had some negative feedback or some negative thoughts within yourself maybe when you're going mm -hmm. through this process? Yeah. Like, of course you come across those doubts. You want to make sure that you're, being able to support yourself um, and also not, you know, giving in to doubts or the things in the back of your mind. Yeah. So um, one thing that I, I try to do is even if it's finding something else to support what you're doing, I always try and like invest that back into music, like just doing whatever, because the thought of like having to do something else full time just sounds so boring. Like I would not be able to live that way. So it, it's yeah. just what, um, so it's always something that I look forward to and it's even though it can get difficult just imagining the amazing things that comes out of it like completely outweighs it so it's just focusing on like the good stuff that you want to uh, grow and like embracing that so yeah absolutely I love that uh, how about yourself Savannah what were some 
hurdles that you kind of had to overcome? I know you said you auditioned twice for the TV show that you were recently on, but what are maybe some other hurdles that kind of set you back or that, you know, had a hiccup in your road to success? Oh, hold on. Oh no. Are you there? I lost your voice. Where'd you go? Um, hold on. That is so weird. Was doing fine. Oh, oh. <laughs> back. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, that's so weird. Awesome. Okay, <laughs> continue. It's my what are some hurdles? <laughs> I'll just pretend like it never happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> what were some hurdles or some negative things you kind of had to jump through the hoops to get to where you are today? <laughs> Definitely. Um, I think the main thing um, that I struggle with is just trusting the process because there are going to be highs and there are going to be lows. And I remember coming off of The Voice, I came back home and as amazing as that experience was, you're also kind of living in a bubble. Yeah. And then you come back and you're like, this is real. <laughs> you're like, I need to make money. <laughs> yes. <And> so, <laughs> so it's just kind of um, just trusting. I, I agree with you, Mov. I, I could not do anything else. And I'm just mm -hmm. imagining, like, I've literally told people if I had to sing on the street the rest of my life, I would. Um, I don't want to, but <laughs> I would. <laughs> Better than nothing. <laughs> Better than nothing. That's true. Exactly. So um, I would just say, I think that, I think in this business, it's very easy to compare yourself to others and just embracing yourself is very important and, um, it's very easy to get in your head. And so, um, I don't know. I think, I think you just truly, tr truly just have to trust the process and trust between all those highs and lows. Um, and when you have those moments of doubt and just, is this really going to happen? You know? So, especially during COVID, because we're all like, all our gigs yeah. are canceled. And we're like, what's going to happen now? <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. I, I think it's been really tough with this whole thing happening because uh, it's really hard to goal set when you're trying to kind of think like, okay, where am I going to be next year? And you're like, well, I'm not really sure because I don't really know if I can travel anywhere, like, or if I can, yeah. you know, like it's, it's a really testing time, I think, for a lot of us. And I think for most of us that are really passionate about it and really care about it, I think it'll, we'll, we'll kind of strive through it, but it's definitely going to, going to test some people that maybe, you know, are like on that, on, kind of on the fence, like, is this right for me? Is this not right for me? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting. Yeah. With um, like trusting the process. I, yeah. To mine is also like patience, like just mm. trusting the process, <laughs> patience. Yeah. You know, see how things turn out, just doing what you can. Yeah. One step at a time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so what are some things that you ladies get inspired by? So when, you know, you're thinking about this career and this lifelong journey of doing music for the rest of your life. Um, what are some things that inspire you or help to kind of keep you level-headed when you're in this process of doing music? Um, Mo, maybe if you want to start off with some things that inspire you. Yeah, seeing artists that are really authentic and stay true to themselves really inspire me. Mm. Like, for instance, Fiona Apple is an artist I really like. She just released something a couple weeks ago, and it's completely off of like what would be trendy or anything but just for someone to just stay by their message stay by the music that they like and release that to the world and it's been so successful because it's just so different mm -hmm. so seeing artists do that and just standing their ground um yeah what I yeah i think in this day and age too we're seeing a lot more authentic as much as we all live in like an instagram you know augmentation or whatever the hell <laughs> whatever the hell's going on uh, uh like with the influencer life i think we are seeing a lot of people break through and be a lot more authentic to themselves for mm -hmm. sure um now savannah what's kind of been your experience and what inspires you to keep going and doing music 100 percent? well um it definitely kind of goes with your answer um i feed off of people completely mm -hmm. no matter if they're going through a good time, bad time, um, just how they experience life, how they react to life. Um, so definitely other artists inspire me, especially some that I get to actually know personally and just seeing how they um, approach uh, life in this business. And, yeah. but overall it's just people. I love people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. I think that's a really good foundation to, 
to have as, as people because at the end of the day, not saying that people are your most important thing you should worry about in your music yeah. career, but they do have a huge effect on your success. So you really yeah. should care about the people that are listening to you or care about you or whatnot or are there to support you. So I think that's, that's really interesting. Um, so what are some ways that you wind down from a day when you're being so involved in the music business? It can feel like it's obviously your entire life, but of course you are still a human being. There's other things that you like to do to kind of help yourself, uh, to dream a little bit, because if we were doing music all the time, we'd have no time to see real life and see real life experiences and everything like that. Um, so Savannah, what are some things that you kind of do to one wind down or maybe some hobbies that you have that maybe don't have to do with music itself? Well, I am a massive movie buff. I mm -hmm. love movies. <laughs> <laughs> so usually after a really long gig, I'm still a home, like I'm still have a homeschool brain. So mm -hmm. I, after like a lot of human interaction, I needed to just completely shut down. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. and my family knows and so I'll come home and I'll end up just watching Grey's Anatomy or something yes. with my dogs so that's probably my main go-to that's always how I have to just kind of chill for a little yeah. bit and then I'll go to sleep <laughs> that's amazing I uh started Grey's Anatomy I've never watched it I started it in the first time at the beginning of quarantine if you will <laughs> um and I'm now in season six and I know there's still 16 Ooh. seasons so I'm like I got a long way to go <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. I decided that was the show I'd watch because I knew how many seasons it had. So I was like, well, don't get bored. I won't run yeah. out of, you know, never you, ending. Yeah. When you finish a show and you're like, oh man, I gotta wait for the next season. Nope. Yeah. I got 16 more to go. <laughs> uh, how about yourself, Mo? What are some like things you do to wind down or to help kind of regulate yourself? Yeah, I love different forms of art. So I like painting as well. So just spending mm -hmm. some time painting. Um, I also really, really like dance too. So mm -hmm. sometimes they have um, instructors on Instagram live or whatever doing like routines or exercises. So that's a good way to kind of step away from focusing on music all the time and just refresh mm -hmm. your brain, you know, realize there's other things to do that I enjoy that I don't always have to be <laughs> doing music all day. So it's yeah. really good to have those little, yeah. little breaks in between. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's important to take some time, kind of like how Savannah was saying, like she loves movies and, and TV shows and, and painting and dancing has the same thing, but it's interesting to kind of see other people's perspectives and other people's lives. And sometimes I think as songwriters, it can help to see different things all around us, right? Because if we're living in our own bubble, it's like, how do you have the opportunity to to write more stuff? Or how do you, how do you know how to write about someone who's been, you know, their father's been been killed or something how would you write from that perspective unless you've seen it from you know a different kind of outlet or media so I think it's I think it's pretty cool um now my next question is what are you most proud of of yourself for accomplishing with your music so far what in your music journey has really made you be like like I did that and I'm really proud of myself for finally doing that um Mo what are some things that you've been proud of since you've like started your music career mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's like a specific thing. It's just looking back at like where I was a few years ago and how much, you know, has really changed since then being getting my music featured in like different retail stores or different radio stations and stuff mm -hmm. like knowing what I've been able to do and like the time I put towards that is like what's resulting from it. So it just keeps me motivated to keep doing what I'm doing to keep that progression going. Yeah, absolutely. And mm -hmm. how about yourself, Savannah? Um, I mean, I, I agree with Mova. I, I definitely love how you can just look back and see the, uh, see the process. I need to use a different word. <laughs> but I would say, I mean, other than the voice, the voice still is something that just like, I wake up and I'm like, did that happen? Is that real? Mm -hmm. um, but I think just also continuing to do music, continuing to stay focused, um, just having different things. Like I remember yesterday, I, I'm planning to do my first EP mm -hmm. move. And um, I just remember I looked at my mom, I was like, I love what I do. This is so crazy. So I think um, just being able to do this, I've never had to have another job. And I love the fact that I still mm -hmm. can, hopefully still can support myself um, being able to do this and um, not live in my car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really tough. I think to just get yourself on that next level and the next step of, you know, taking it as a full-time career. And I think people yeah. for sure, like 
can, can I don't want to say like they look down on it, but it can be seen as like a not serious career. So I think it's really, yeah. it's awesome to see people like your guys' selves just really like break through that barrier and not let it affect anything. Um, so I'm kind of, this is the same on that kind of like the negative train of, you know, negative feedback or even in yourself, like negative thoughts. Um, how I want you, you don't have to necessarily explain an exact scenario. Um, but you, if you've been told something negative or if something you had a negative experience or something didn't go as planned, how do you kind of bounce back from that as someone who wants to do this and takes it very, very seriously? What are some kind of ways that you have bounced back and, and almost grown from that experience? Um, now, Savannah, again, I know you said, you know, you had to audition twice. So I can imagine you kind of have to learn how to, to bounce back and pick yourself up. So what are some kind of ways that you've talked yourself to being like, nope, I still got this. I know I'm really great at this. I'm going to be successful. Well, I think with any bad feedback or any um, negative negativity, I think um, as songwriters, we always look at that with purpose and we're like, we'll just write mm. a song about it. <laughs> yes. So that's what I've done in the past. Um, I know. Let's see. react to stuff and um I think he approaches it with the the look on hey they took time to say a negative comment on your thing mm -hmm. either way that still in a kind of helps you <laughs> I guess, <laughs> yep. if it makes sense um just respect their opinion I mean it's it's a very um art and music is a very subjective thing so mm -hmm. um I think just taking it as it is. Um, and I've grown each time I've had any negativity. So just yeah. looking back and seeing that and saying, Hey, you got back up, you dusted yourself off and you moved on. Yeah. And so, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, yeah. That's amazing. It's, and it's hard to respond to the, to the haters, right? If you, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. hard to get over that. Cause it's just like, how can anyone be so mean? But, I know. You know, like I have yeah. never gone on a YouTube video or a channel of someone or like on TV and been like, oh, you're trash. But like, I know yeah. there's people out there that do that, but I, in my mm -hmm. head, I'm just like, I don't yeah. understand. Yeah. And people are yeah. always like, oh, you know, those people are insecure or, you know, they're projecting onto other people. And that's kind of, I think mm -hmm. what I've taken from negative feedback sometimes is sometimes, yeah, maybe they're actually saying you suck and maybe they actually mean it. I don't actually know. And it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, but a lot of people, when they say, you know, hurtful things or mean things, it's typically just because, you know, they're projecting their own selves, right? Mm -hmm. So you just have to kind of keep that in mind that some people are just projecting their insecurities on you. So you shouldn't let it affect you. Right. But yeah. yeah. Um, how about yourself, Mo? If you've ever had any, you can even tell us, or you don't have to, but any negative experiences where you've kind of grown through that process and how you got past it? Yeah, I would say like the early songs I was making like years back when I, you know, would send them to someone to check them out, give me their opinion, you know, they would come back and say, you know, this has a little bit more work to be done. And in, in my head, I thought like, oh, this song's good to go. Like, yeah you know, I thought it was going to do well, but that really, th that feedback just helped me realize, like, my style more, like, mm. with those earlier songs, I wasn't fully pushing the envelope enough into something yeah. that I really, like, believed in, so that kind of gave me more assurance to, like, go for it, like, right. make the songs that you want to make type thing, and, you know, people, someone's going to like it, so I think it's, yeah. it's good to take that feedback and not always disregard it but kind of just make you think like okay like what, what else can I do and mm -hmm. to improve it so yeah. yeah absolutely um now my last question for you today ladies is what advice would you give to a new artist who wants to take their career to the next level and that like we said that committing 100% um what advice would you give them before they start this journey of taking it 100% and taking it very very seriously um, so Mo, what, what would you kind of tell someone, a younger, maybe a younger version of your own self or someone else, what would you tell them to keep them inspired and motivated? Yeah, I would like tell them to be disciplined because it's not just something that's like, woo, I can just do this and all of it's going to fall into place. Like, you know, there, there is work that needs to be done, with, like thinking how you want to brand yourself and all of the other small things. So unfortunately mm -hmm. there is that business aspect of it, but it's important to just kind of think that through and to, yeah. you know, put the discipline and the perseverance 
uh, mm-hmm. to stick with it. Yeah. Music business is huge. It's really overlooked. I think when yeah. people, you know, that's the part that's not the glamorous part that's not really shown, but it's, it's massively important. Like it mm. makes a huge difference in your success for sure. Yeah. Um, how about yourself, Savannah? What advice would you give to a younger version of yourself or anyone that's starting out brand new in music? Um, well, I'll go back to one of my first thoughts of just work ethic pays off. I really mm-hmm. think, um, when you work hard at something and you really, really, really just put your all into it, it will pay off. You just have to kind of wait for the, and be patient and for the process. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be your new slogan. Wait for the process. <laughs> Merch. Um, <laughs> but I would say that and just, um, I've come across a lot of people that you just see trying to be someone else. Yeah. And when you really embrace who you are and just show up and I saw one girl one time and she had metallic lipstick on and I was like, mm-hmm. I'm looking at my chapsticks, like where's the gold one? <laughs> like, I don't know where to find this. And <laughs> you just really have to um, just embrace who you are because it, yeah. it, authenticity just really pays off and people see through that. So Mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. I love that advice. Thank you so much, ladies. Um, so that was actually our last question for the day. We are out of time. We are so lucky to have had you both on today. Um, if you guys are at home watching this round table with Vienna white on YouTube, make sure to like subscribe and hit the bell button uh, to be notified about our shows. We post them Monday to Friday, or if you're more of a podcast person, uh, check out our Vienna white podcast to hear as well. Uh, so before we log off, could I get you both to just say your full stage name and where our audience can find you on social media? Um, so Savannah, can you start it off? Yes, I. Uh, my full name is Savannah Brister, just like it sounds. Uh, you can find me on savannahbrister.com or uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, TikTok is money, hey. uh, Twitter, <laughs> <laughs> all of the socials. <laughs> and most of them I'm considered Savannah Brister or Savannah Brister Music. Fantastic. And Mo. Yes. So I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. And my name <laughs> is spelled M A U V E. So if you go to my website, move music.com, you can find more of my stuff on there. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much again, ladies. Have a great day. It was amazing you. meeting you both. Thank you. You thank too. You. <laughs>